Hi, I'm Corey. Welcome to Creating with Scraps. This is another episode of Random Rectangles, and I will show you what we're going to be making today. I've temporarily, at least, decided to close this journal with just a bit of sari silk and then wrapped and tied around a button. Because I have the sari silk and it actually matches this cover and it's not a color I use very often, I thought I might go that route. So I, I may change my mind, but for now that's what I've got. All right, today what we're going to be making, it's a, well, there's, there's five bits for today. This is another belly band. I made it back when I was making the belly bands, but I ran out of time. At least I think it's a, a belly band. Oh no, is it the belly band? Oh, it is. It was just sticking because it does. So a belly band, and then on top of the belly band, there's just this little glued on pocket with just a bit of decoration. And it's a wrap around. So this can be used glued at the bottom as a pocket. It can be glued at the top as a tuck. And it can also just sit here in the middle as a belly band. So it's full width of the page, whatever the width of your page. And then it wraps around. And the remaining bit of rectangle also has a pocket on it. And it can open up. Well, maybe it can open up. There we go can open up as a notepad, as a journaling notepad. And I've done, like I said, I've done a variation on this in flips, flaps, and folds, where it was um, a big piece with uh, uh, pockets on the side. But I wanted, it was when I was still making belly bands, and I thought it was a great versatile option, and so I wanted to include it in here. So we'll be making that, and then we'll be making what I call the two-piece pocket, the lift up, flip down, which is a variation of the Laura Bame flip down. A tuxedo pocket, and I think I'll have a couple versions to show you on the tuxedo pockets, and then just a simple file folder. So those are the projects we'll be making today, and let's get started on this first one. And I call it a wraparound booklet. Now, it's, other people probably have something similar, if not the exact same thing, and maybe they have a different name for it, but that's just kind of how I think of it. So that's what I'm gonna call it. All right, wrap around booklet. Here are the pieces I've got ready. And here are some samples. And this is honestly how I came up with it. I'm, I don't know why I saved it, but I was in a, a delightful meeting at school and I started thinking about it and I made it into a pocket. And I thought, you know what? I've done this before and then let's see. So, okay, I can, I can put a pocket. I, I think I glued this on because the cup. No, I didn't because it was so thin, just with index cards. So glued a pocket down and then wrapped it around, because this is what I had, and made it just a little booklet, so with a little notepad. And so that's kind of where, where I went with it. And here is a, another sample, but this one, rather than wrapped around a page, I wrapped it around a card. So in this one, the book, the belly band pocket wraparound booklet is wrapped around a page. But here I cut one to the same size and just put it around another piece of cardstock as if this were a page, just not in a journal yet, to make a card. So I've got the front of my card. I've got my little booklet. This one just closes with Velcro. And then you it wraps around the page. And this time it's a top tuck. Instead of putting it in the middle of the page as a belly band, I just used Tracy's Fussy Cut Butterfly paper and made it a top tuck so that you could put the journaling card there. So there was an option. And then and in my clearing out some of my digitals doing makes, I didn't cut these to size because I don't know what size journal they're gonna go in, but it's but it's the same exact idea. So I can, once I know the, the width of my journal, I'll cut this down, but it'll wrap around the page. And then on this one, I thought rather than, um, so it'll wrap around, this side of the page, right? Like this, this will be in the front and then this will be back here. And then I thought I could do one of the closures where you put the little loop here and then you tuck this in just, just to mix it up a little bit. And then when again, when I know the width of the page, I'll put the pocket or maybe a second belly band. Maybe the, this one will be a pocket and this one will be a belly band. So I'll glue this down to the bottom of the full width of the page. And then I'll make, um, what would I say? A, so this would be a pocket and then this top piece would be a belly band because there's no reason it can't go, you know, over that. So I put, even though I don't know exactly what size this will be for yet, I was able to still 
make it in advance and it'll fit in I use black quite a bit so it'll fit in a variety of different journals and then the same thing with this one just with a little bit different look I used just different um, off cuts and bits of flowers and such so this will wrap around the page this will be a full fit and then I can put the pocket or the belly band on the top of that and the way I make those and, and again it's 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 pretty straightforward when I know the width of the page right so let's just say okay I, that's right I put a piece of card stuck here I I know the width of the page this is five inches and a lot of times I'll make my journals five inches wide just because I like it so I could wrap it right here but when this is Tracy's compendium maybe compendium three um, Oh, and I'm sorry for those of you who don't know Tracy Fox creative love junk journals has a whole lot of really great digitals and I've got um, several of the kits and papers and this is is one of them but I would be more aware well or maybe let's say I was going on this side of the page yeah well that's a really good fit of where it's going to wrap because I want the whatever image I have on top I want it to you know I don't want to cut it off in the middle or something like that so I'd be aware of it and you know this side so maybe rather than having it wrap to the right maybe I'll have it wrapped to the left yeah let's do that okay so I'm going to you don't have to score it but you can you can just fold it I'll clip here and this width on this one I think is four inches but you can do th you can see here you can do three inches you can do two inches you can do whatever you want for the size journal you're working in or for the card you're making so I'll just use this because this is a little bit of heavier paper so I'll use this to wrap it around All right so here is my you know here is my belly band or my pocket or whatever I'm going to do or my top tuck so I've got that piece and I prepped a piece of um, whatever this stuff is this is um, coffee dyed tracing paper so I'll glue this on so that I can have a pocket on this and I'll just put a little bit of glue so I can sew it later and you'll see it's a little bit long and I'll show you why it's a little bit long in just a minute just because it's thin so I'll just use a tiny bit so that this it, it'll hold in place but it won't um, it won't show too much once I've sewn it in um, yeah something like that all right so I'm just gonna kind of tack it in place and now here rather than cutting it off at the bottom um, because this paper is a little bit thinner it's super strong what I'm going to do this is the back side or the inside that I'm going to put down on onto my page this is going to be the inside of my pocket or the inside of my um, belly band whatever I decide so I'm going to put glue here and roll it over it just gives the edge a different look sure sometimes I cut them off but it gives the edge a different a little bit different look and it just makes it a little tiny bit sturdier I think and then I'll just tear tear this bit off now you don't have to do that you can absolutely just cut it off at the edge whatever whatever width you want but I'm going to do it like that and then when this is a belly band I'll put a piece of tape so I glued it down and then I'm going to put a piece of tape so the card that I put through it or whatever item I put through it um, doesn't catch so I'll put a piece of packing tape and I happen to like the Gorilla packing tape but any packing tape works I find packing tape works a little bit better than regular cellophane tape it just seems to get in the way less it doesn't lift I don't ever have to worry about it lifting up all right so that's the inside and that just gives you kind of a smooth wrapped finish at the bottom so this will be the pay the full width so, so this if this sorry about that if this is my five inch page it'll take the full width of the page and again once I've got a journal for it I can decide whether it's a belly band or maybe it's going to be a top tuck and I'll, I'll put a piece right here or maybe it's going to be a bottom pocket and I'll put a tag or something in the back then it'll we'll flip over my page and this is the image I've got on front I made a three inch notepad so I'm going to make this just slightly larger than three inches you can make your notepads or your scrap pads whichever I call a notepad one that all has the same writing paper a scrap pad is just random writing my definitions only I mean it, it, it truly doesn't matter so I 
I want this a little bit wider and I think I said I made this three inches yeah I did so I'm gonna cut this piece just a little bit wider than three inches and that'll be my wrap around now a lot of times I just have a piece of paper you know an off cut of cardstock and I'll wrap it around one page and then whatever's left on the other side is what I use for the note the note part notepad part sorry my voice is still waking up today but this one just happened to be a long scrap because um, I had used the other bit of this for something else so it was a little bit longer scrap which is why I'm able to um, cut it off but I also could have folded it over and opened up the notebook to make more extension now I almost always use thick cardstock or thicker paper when I make my journal pages so my pages get thick really quickly many people most people maybe I would even say use thinner paper so having an extra fold doesn't make that much of a difference for their journals with mine it does which is why I trimmed that off and then I'll absolutely save that for something else and then I've got my notepad and I'm gonna glue it down now I haven't decided obviously how I'm gonna close this and I have some options I can put a magnet in there I can just put a strip of paper on there I can put a piece of velcro and maybe that's what I would do maybe I would cut this 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 part off right here well let's just do it because we can because we can and for no other reason so I'll cut just a bit of that scrap off and I'll roll it roll it over to make it a little bit thicker I don't mind that because the notepad itself is thick, so this being a little thick won't, won't be problematic. And then I'll trim that down. Now if I were going to use magnets, I would put the magnet between these two layers, the little thin magnet between those two layers. But because I'll probably use Velcro, and I, I like the little mini Velcro dots, so I don't mind using those. I will glue this together. And I would normally clamp it, but I don't want to pull out the clamps. Okay, and now I'll ink that top edge where it's white. I'm not a fan of white edges, unless of course they're supposed to be white, and then that's a different story. All right, then I can just glue this here, or sew this here. We'll just do it like this. And again, I would clamp it. I'm going to use my fingers as a clamp and then when I've got my page whatever size page it's on for example if it were this page here or if it was this page I would just put a bit of velcro on both on both of these pieces and then there's my closure this one's a little long I'd probably trim it down a bit but it's not going to go on this page so I don't want to do that yet and again if I were making these in advance I know I often make five inch pages so I'll be able to use this and then the last step is just to glue in the notepad now sometimes I'll glue the whole back down and then sometimes I'll glue just this top because if I know the journal is going to a person who likes to write a lot um, then they have the opportunity to change out their notepad once it's full and again I would clamp those so um, I use those quilting clamps quite often other people use bulldog clips or other things Sometimes I find that this leaves a little groove in the paper because of the um, the adhesive and our bumps if I use uh, like an acetate type glue or an acid based type type not acid based um, you know this kind of glue the beacon or the three in one that one leaves bumps so I don't use this very often I find it makes things a little more bumpy but if you were using this type of glue um, because of the depth of the glue sometimes clamps will leave a little bit of a mark in there that's what I was trying to say all right and so wrap around is done and I am not going to take this long with the rest of them because we'll be here for a week all right wrap around done two-piece pocket now I've done variations on this I've been doing this one for a long time way before I started junk journaling and it's just a great way to use scraps I think there's one of these in flips flaps and folds and it's just two pieces of cardstock to make a two-sided pocket and it this one is it happens to be a long thin one because that's what fit this journal but it um, certainly doesn't have to be it can be 
wider. And the, in fact, the other samples I show you will be wider. See, so you've got a pocket on the inside once you lift it up. You could put another pocket there or a notepad, and I do that often. <coughs> Pardon me. And then you flip it over, and you've got room. I've got a pocket on the back for a tag or a tuck or what have you. So that's what we're going to be making. And I just, on this one, I just put, I had gotten a coat check on an Etsy order, and I thought that was really, really kind of cute. So I just inked it up and put it on here. Um, just kind of a handy little pocket. Great also for popping in the mail. And the way you make those is, oh, I even saved the little bits. Um, well, let me show you the, the other samples I've got here. So you can see that's a tall, thin one. These, most of the time, the way I make them, and I've had this one for a long time, is a little bit shorter and a little bit wider. And this one's decorated, and I use these sometimes, these D-rings, as just a weight to hold the flap closed so it doesn't lift up. And then you can put charms or dangles or whatever, or any, nothing on it if you choose. Um, you can decorate the back or not. See here, I don't. it doesn't impede whatever I'm putting in the back because I just glued it onto the bottom section. So I still have got the full pocket with just a bit of decoration. So there's one double-sided using Tim Holtz paper. And then here's one using the digitals. And here you can see I just put a bit of, well, maybe you can see, just a bit of lace at the end of that D-ring. I really like using those. Yes, they're bulky, but like I said, they hold them closed, and it's just another little bit of interest. So I kind of like the way they look. I think I saw this on Pinterest several years ago, and because these are one of the earlier things that I made. But I could have seen it on a channel, and so if I did, I apologize. I don't claim that I created any of these, and maybe you've twisted or tweaked a variation, but um, you know, I'm sure they've been around for a long time. So inside pocket, same idea. And then you flip it over and then you've got your back tuck pocket. And again, I decorated that one. And here's another one in here. Um, Marley from Marley's Design had gifted me a, a beautiful journal that I she gave me permission to share. So I'll do that at a, a different date. Gorgeous, gorgeous journal. And she gave me some awesome little treasures for Happy Meal. And this was on one of the wrappings that she did. So I thought, I don't know if you can see, it's a pen nib and then just a bit of punches, little label or ticket punches and I put it on a jump ring and put it on here because I thought it was really pretty. Yes it adds a little bit of bulk but but not enough for me to care. And then um, a birdie lift up there's your inside piece. Now this one I was, did not print double sided it was single sided so I just backed the piece that was going to show with a thin digital and then flip it around and then there's a little bit of a pocket on the back. Oh, just a tag and a plain card notebook. So I was at a oh, senior center rummage sale and I got these packs, decks of cards for a quarter. And I just thought this black, this old black one was super cool just because I like the darker color there and kind of goes with the grunge. And I, anyway, I turned it into just a little itty bitty notebook. All right. So let me show you how I did those. I'm going to move these to the side. So I've got two rectangular pieces. Now these again are Tracy's Digital's compendium. I think it's three, but I could be wrong. It's another, maybe it's another compendium. I, I printed it on both sides and this is what I've got. Now I, I almost never make journals this wide. Okay, I never make journals this wide. So I would trim it somewhere. And in fact, let's just do that because yeah, I don't I I'll, I wouldn't use it this way, which would be kind of a bummer. So, hmm, I do 5-inch journals a lot and sometimes 5 and a half, so let's make this 5. And I chose that spot because it allows me to keep all the flower in even though it's only partially going to show and it still gave me a good chunk to use as I can you know, that's already backed. I could just use this as a journal card. Maybe put a little lace on the edge or a tab on the edge and there's there's a journal card. It's a little bit thinner, but that's, that's okay. All right, so I decided that this is going to be five inches. And so my next piece needs to be five inches. Now, you can make these two pieces the same size, five and five, and that works beautifully. But if you've got one that's, you know, longer or what have you, um, then... You can do that too because 
your top piece is basically just going to fold over. And you know what? That's really pretty. Maybe I'll make this a little bit thinner. I like the way that looks. The top piece is just going to fold over. You're going to lift this up in the front and it's going to be the base of your back. And it doesn't fold over in half. It generally folds over like this. And I really like the place that goes. Okay, I like that. So this is going to be my width. I'll change this. All right, so one of the pieces you know is going to be your top. And a lot of times I'll do this exact same thing. I'll look at the pattern on the paper and decide where to cut or fold or how wide it's going to be based on that. And I don't really like that little strip at the end. So I don't dislike it. I mean, I just think it'll look smoother without it. So I'll trim that off. And this is not quite four inches. So that'll be my dimension for the bottom piece. So this is going to be my top piece, the flap that I lift up and then the base for the back. All right. So now I need to make my bottom piece to fit. So I want, what do I want to show? So I know I need to, well, I guess I don't even need to trim this. Well, a little bit I do, but not, but not much, not much at all. I just need to take the hair off of that. Oh, see, this is four inches. So I mean, literally just a smidge. So I'll take that off. And then this will be the piece that fits here. Now, Again, I want to be mindful of where it's going to fold, right? Do I want this to show? Do I want the bottom of this? Or do I want to tuck it underneath and have it be like this when it lifts up? I kind of like the way that looks. So that'll be my mark line for how much I fold on the back. All right, and then this is going to be a tiny little pocket and it's going to be upside down. So I didn't do that very well, did I? But you know what? This is fixable. So that's fixable. I will save this maybe and use this for something else. No, Corey, you can do this. I don't want that upside down. Uh, oh, you know what? Why don't I just do it like this? But the flower is really pretty. I mean, it's kind of a really pretty flower, isn't it? So let's see. Maybe I'll just make this a little bit shorter so I have more room on the back and then I'll put a label over there. Okay, problem solved. Um, maybe I'll do it like that. So I want to be aware of what is showing, right? I want to be aware of what I'm seeing on the front and where it ends, but I also want at least a little bit of a, a tuck spot in the back. It doesn't have to be huge. All right, so I will clamp this and now I know where to fold it right here. You know what, Corey? Fix the problem. I'm just going to take a little bit off this. Sorry, you can tell. I did plan this, but I didn't plan it all the way out. So what I did, because I didn't like where it folded, I didn't like the end that would show, I just made this piece a little bit shorter. Um, it doesn't have to... It doesn't have to um, be a certain height, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Your paper doesn't have to be a certain amount long. You just want it to fit how you're wrapping. So I can put it where I want it. By making the back piece a little bit shorter, I can adjust it and put it where I want. All right, let me ink this edge so I'll show you what I mean. Oh, I almost forgot. I, I don't have to. A lot of times, like with these samples, I took a divot out of the middle just because I like the way it looks. You know, it might mark the center use my pencil, mark the center, and then use a circle punch to take a divot. And I'll do that in the back, but I, I don't think I want to in the front. I really like that flower and I want it, I want to be able to see it, so I'm going to. I don't want to chop the flower off. All right, and I want this to end right here, right here. So, go like this, and I can use my scoreboard and score it right here where the overlap is or where I'm folding it, but I don't have to. I can just use the paper that is there. Now, because I made this shallow and I put that word carnival upside down, I'll be mindful when I put my tag or tabs or what have you or decorator, whatever, I'll put something on it that hides the upside down carnival because I don't care for it. If you're a person who doesn't mind upside down words, well, then that won't bother you in the least. All right, so I know that it fits now. Okay, this was supposed to be super fast and I didn't make it super fast. Sorry about that. And let's see, center, what did I say? This was just under four, so just around two. I'm not great at eyeballing center, which is why I do it this way. And just a little divot. 
with a circle punch. And I'll ink that edge just because I won't be, well, I can, but it's not as easy to ink it after you've glued it on. And then I just, I sew these because I like the way they look sewn. Well, I guess I didn't sew these samples. I guess I was intentional about not sewing the samples. Well, that's a good thing. Then I can show you what I'm talking about. All right. I like to sew a lot of things, so I um, use glue lightly, but it looks like in this case I didn't sew. Therefore, I will put more glue down here to hold the pocket. Glue the pocket in place. And again, I would clamp this because to hold it while it dries, it doesn't take long to dry by any means, but clamping it I just feel like gives it a, a more firm hold. And there's my inside pocket, here's my lift, and here's my back pocket. Okay, see, now I took it, the divot out of that, but I'll still, I'll, there's a workaround. I'll use some transparency. I'll put a bit of lace there. I'll put, I mean, I can put a cluster there. I can put whatever I want there to hide that upside down word. And then I'll glue these two sides. And there you go. That's how you make that pocket. Then you can just close it like this. You can use Velcro. You don't have to put something on there, but I like to put a little, I, I like to put the little D ring on there. I like the weight of it that holds it down. So I'm going to show you how I do that. And it's very simple. I almost feel guilty for showing you, but someone won't know. So I've got a piece of paper that will fit my D-ring. And I, I have a couple different colors. I got these on Amazon for, I don't know, it wasn't very spendy. And it came with, oh, antique black, uh, antique brass, silver, and gold. And I think on this one, there's a lot of black in there. So maybe I'll use the antique black on this one. And the, the copper, bronze, whatever that, not copper, bronze, antique gold is my usual go-to, but you know, I kind of like, because there's black in the writing on there. Piece of paper through the D-ring. I think this is about a half inch because I think this is a half inch D-ring. I believe that's what I got. And then I will just glue these two pieces together. It's just a scrap bit of card. And then I do clamp these for a little bit before I glue them down generally, simply because um, I want to make sure that those hold nicely. And you don't need much here. You can see that's about a thumb's width or so. And make sure it's down. And then I would put it right here. I have it drop down over the edge of the front just a bit. I don't know, maybe about like that. And then I'll glue this in place. Actually, that might be too wide. So I'm going to take a bit more off that just to make sure that my tab covers it completely. And this isn't going to show so much, so it was more about the color of the paper than anything else. Because that's not going to show. That's how I'm going to either glue it down or hide the edge. So I'll, I like just, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch of a reveal right there. And I don't think that matters so much. If you want it longer, make it longer. And I push that down and then I get a label. And I put the label on top. And in fact, on this one, I like the label going over the edge just a bit. So I think I'll do that. And then the label hides where I've got that D-ring falling. So I will glue down a label. And again, I, I like to center it and I l actually like the fact that it's going off the edge a bit there. So I'm going to leave that. Glue it down, press, and there you go. There's this. Now I'll ink it and, and finish it up and such, but I still, I've got that pretty image there. I've got the front pocket. Back pocket needs a little bit of love, but, but that's okay too. Maybe I'll put a notepad in there or a tall card and then I'll cover that up. All right, there's the two piece pocket. And this one I made a little bit taller and a little bit, but this one's a little bit wider. So Honestly, the size of the cardstock doesn't matter. You can make these super tiny if you choose to, if you like the little journals. All right, again, took way longer than I thought. That was supposed to be a super quick one. All right, this is going to be a long video. Oh, this is this one. Okay, I can do this quick. Let's see if I can really and truly do it quick like I think. This is just a lift up drop down. Now, I've done it in the past where I call them Laura Bame drop downs because um, Laura's channel 
was the first one, first person I saw do it. So she gets credit for it from me. Now she has since passed away, but I still, this is still her idea and I still think of it that way. Originally I just had it drop down and I tucked it under a little tab, but I thought why not lift up and then drop down. And I've, I've done it that way several times just to have more journaling space and the weight of the card holds it closed. So you don't have to have a paper clip if you don't want to. And most of the time, the way I do those and the reason I do those is because I've got a, an image or a piece of paper or a little something that I really want to use. And I like the way it looks. Maybe it's a cluster, maybe it's a whatever. And I want to use it on top of something and I want it to be functional, but maybe I don't need another pocket. So this is a great place for a drop down. So all this is, is a piece of off cut of one of the compendium kits and then a floral floral image and I sewed it on top with just a bit of that lace behind it. It can be anything. It can be, it can be a playing card. It can be anything you want. I've done it a lot of times with scraps. I'll put scraps on the top of this and make it the lift up. So I've got this cut and then I measure whatever my width is and I cut a piece, an off cut to fit the width. Then I will glue, and a lot of times I will use glue stick for this just because it's smooth and flat. I'll glue the back of this, and I know I over glue, but, but I don't have lift that way. And I use the kids' recycled paper from school a lot of times as my glue papers, so you know, I don't mind, I don't mind getting rid of them that way. <clears throat> And then I'll glue this down on, I'd already started to fold this based on the width, but this is just a long bit of paper. Whatever length I've got on the image that I want to put on top, I will make my first fold, <clears throat> pardon me, I'll make my first fold at that length. I want it to match so that it, it looks just like the, the, the fold down in the image there. I want it to fit smoothly and there we go glue it into place glue stick is, gives you a little bit more flexibility with gluing things down than some of the other glue options all right and again use your glue of preference if you don't have to use glue stick and then i'll push this down to make sure it's nice and tight sometimes like when i'm making journaling cards i'll put them through the laminator to make sure that the, I've reactivated the heat. Heat will reactivate most glues. I don't know about all glues, but it'll reactivate most glues. And so I'll put it through my laminator to make sure that the glue is evenly spread and, and tight. So then I've got a piece that looks like this. Then I just use the guideline of my card to fold it up to make the next fold. That will go, eventually go underneath. And then again, I'll use the height of the top of my card to fold it down so I don't need a scoreboard. You can use a scoreboard, but you don't need one. And this, I would have a little bit hanging out here, so I'll just trim that off. And I don't trim so straight, so I'll just use my paper trimmer. Trim that off, and it doesn't have to be perfect because it can fold up and in. Yeah, see, there you go. It's a little bit short. That's fine because it's going to roll up inside. And then, to here, and okay, here, and there. All right, and that is my fold down. So when I put this, let's see, Corey, no, don't do that, Corey. Don't, don't listen to what I say. You can fold it a couple different ways. I was supposed to fold that inside, not outside, so that it actually drops down and I'm not gluing it to the back. But you still fold it the exact same way. You, you do the same thing, it's just when I folded it back there, I should have folded it under. All right, so I drop like this. So I'm going to glue this into my journal, right, this back piece right here, and then lift up the top and then pull down the bottom. And there's your uh, fold down. All right, tuxedo pockets. Now these have been, I'm sure gazillions of people have done these and they're just, they're super easy, super quick and you can alter them a couple different ways. This tuxedo pocket, 
Uh, and I'm going to show you with single-sided cardstock. But I've got some samples of tuxedo pockets here to show you what I mean. You can do these. These have been around for as long as I can remember. Heck, I think we used these in card making, in fact, back 20, 30 years ago. So here's a tuxedo pocket. These just used the offcuts of something, right? This might have been a double-sided. And this is a great project for double-sided cardstock or double-sided paper, but it doesn't have to be here. I've got four tucks, one, two, three, four for that. And this is just a little guy. He's what, maybe two and a half by three and a half, four, something like that. Here is the same thing, but I didn't fold it all the way over. So it's still a tuxedo pocket and you still have lots of real estate. There's a pocket there. And then there's a side pocket here. I think I saw Julie at Camellia Craft Designs do these once upon a time too. I don't remember if it's a new video or an old video or something, but uh, it's the same thing. It's just a different variation. So there's a side pocket there. And then I use the off cut to make a corner tuck here. And then there is the same thing. I use these for scrap busters. The same thing without the divot taken out. So if you don't want a divot, you just want it flat. You can still get that side tuck and then you can still get that bottom tuck down there. So there's there's another version of it. And here it is with full page folds, right? In the back, right here, and then there's a front chuck. So there's one, two, three spots in there. And then depending on how you glue it down, you can make this a belly band, you can make this a pocket, or you can make it a top tuck, right? So you put it on top and then you've got your bits there and then this journaling piece goes out the bottom. And then, oh, here, here we go. I have another one. It's an itty bitty one. So here's a tiny one with a small piece and it's got one, two, three built-in tuck spot pockets. And again, you could use it, glow it in your book this way and use it as a side tuck if you chose. So these are really versatile little guys and they're extremely easy to make. And then this is the sample for my book. I just did a, a three-sided one. I didn't make that into a pocket because I could have. But again, I'm working on the bulk in my uh, sample book. And the way you make these. Now, there are ways to make it so... See, my pockets are often offset. Um, you let me, let me show you what I mean here. I don't measure to make sure that my overlaps are perfectly even. And I do that on purpose because of how I use these pockets. I want, I don't necessarily want these to be centered, lined up, but you can make it that way if you choose to. You just have to measure where your center is after you make your first fold. But for the most part, I just kind of make them random. I don't, over, I don't over measure on these. So measurement is not necessary unless you want it. So you can see these two different pockets are not centered. Their folds are not centered. These, when I do the when I do the shorter ones, I do measure, I do center it. And basically when I make this right or left-handed fold, whichever the first fold is, I note where about the center is. And then when I'm cutting the second piece, I'll make sure they overlap mostly in the center. Gosh, am I even in frame? Mostly in the center. Because these are a little bit shorter and it I'm only making this back into one pocket, right? And the side bit, I don't even know where I threw that little piece. So this side bit here is going to show because I want this to be shorter and then this bit here. So it matters a little bit more, but I don't even think that really matters truthfully. So you can make it centered if you choose to, but you don't have to, I guess is what I'm poorly trying to say. All right, I've got, I've got this long bit of single-sided cardstock. I don't have a double-sided in this this can be made with double-sided and it's great because this little back bit that shows but it's only that little bit that shows so i don't mind that i'm using single-sided and then i just took a piece of book page and i will once i've got my folds i'll put the book page in here to hide that bit of white you can leave it white if you don't mind because you know realistically you're going to tuck something in there anyway so it wouldn't show all right decide on how wide you know, your, the paper you have will decide a little bit, but you really and truly don't have to measure these, which is kind of nice. I almost always fold the leftover first. So in this case, I'm going to fold the right over. Like most of these, oh, I guess I do fold leftover. I do fold leftover first. Leftover, leftover, leftover first. Okay, so I do it leftover first most of the time. But here's the one with the right over the first. 
I guess my whole point with that, it doesn't matter. If you want to fold to the right, fold to the right. If you want to fold to the left, fold to the left. It's going to work either way. So I'm going to fold this not... I'm going to have this as my middle panel and I'm going to fold this, I don't know, about so. Again, you do not have to measure. I just want to make sure that this side, I've got enough. Oh, it doesn't quite, doesn't quite meet, but that's okay because it's not going to show. So I'm going to fold there and put a crease down. I could use my bone folder. To, I have an, an, a friend sent me a new bone folder with a squirrel on it, but it's more like a cheese knife thing, but I guess I could use it as a bone folder and it makes me smile. So I could use that. If I was making one of these two pockets, I wouldn't fold it quite as much. So I wouldn't fold over quite as much because it doesn't have to match here and it doesn't have to match here. You're not going for the whole length of your page. So I might fold it a little bit less or use a shorter piece. It'll still work, but I'm more conscious, I guess, of which type of a pocket I'm going to make. And a lot of times the cardstock I have available will determine the type of pocket I make. But here I had a little bit less cardstock, so I didn't fold as much. I didn't need to fold as much. It wouldn't show. And then I'll take this right side and fold that down too. And I'll give it a sure crease. I, you can use this with copy paper. I'm using cardstock, so mine's a little bit thicker. Then this inside piece, whichever piece is your inside piece, right or left, you just cut it at a triangle, cut it at an angle. I don't always see where this line is, where they've creased. So I'll, most often I'll come in with my pencil and I'll make just dug a little mark. Uh, shadows, I don't know if you can see that. Just make a little mark at that top corner. And I will cut off an angle of that paper. Now, the back piece, the piece that's on the, the back of your first fold, I guess, I want a little bit higher than my second piece. So I'm just being careful at what kind of angle I make. I don't want to angle it all the way down to the bottom because then it won't show in the back. So I'm going to make this a shallower piece. And I'll just, you can see there, I'll just play with it until I think, oh, eh, that looks about right. Now, if I had my miter saw, that'd be a different story. Oh, maybe that's what they need, a miter saw trimmer. Hmm. How cool could that be? You could see some seriously great angles. All right, back piece, just trimming off a bit of a triangle. And I usually save these. You can use these in the front if you choose to. So there's the back. Yeah, that's enough of a reveal for me. I'm good with it. And you know, I folded that a little more than I think I would have liked to because I don't want it to impede when I fold the other. So I'm just going to trim a tiny little sliver off. Don't have to, but now it's not right at that fold edge. See, so it's going to fold easily without any impeding. So that's going to be my back piece. So now I want to make an angle that's a little bit steeper for my front piece. And I'll do the same thing so that I can see where my corner is. And I'm just going to make it a little bit steeper cut. Yeah, maybe about there. And if I don't like it, Okay, here, you know what? Let's, let me show you this. So I'm gonna make my angle. No, because I wanna use it as a pocket. No, I'm not gonna do that. I want to use this as a tuck spot. My point is if you don't like where you cut it, like if you didn't cut it steep enough so that it, you've got a reveal right here, right? You can cut a little bit more. I mean, you can, you can trim it down a little bit more if you want a steeper angle, you get to pick. But I didn't do that because I want to use this piece right here as the corner pocket and the more I cut off of this, the less corner pocket I would get. And this right here is a great example of why I ink. So you can see the edges. And there was no way for me to show you this in ink in advance, so deepest apologies. I mean, I guess I could have had one prepped, but I'm more prepped. So I, I'll ink the edge, and you can see where it stands out now, and then I'll ink this edge. I know some people do it this way, and that's fine too. It works. I, I, I like the little frayed look it gets doing it that way, so which is why I do it. All right. Now I've got this pocket. I'll put it on here. And so you can see it doesn't matter that this doesn't touch the edge on the left side because the little tuck spot I'm 
putting on covers that up. So you're, you're not going to see it. But I don't want the white in the back. So what I'm going to do here, I've got some got some dictionary page. I don't remember what kind of a dictionary this is. It, I guess it talks about M words or, or just lists a bunch of words. So I'll trim the edge off of that. No, that's not a straight trim though. So I'll try that again, but make it straight. There we go. That's better. Meh, fine. And I'll lay it in the back here where it's going to show. Now this is a little wide, so I've got to trim it down a bit more. And I'll mark where I'm going to trim it. I need to trim it right about here. And I'll want it just inside the fold crease. Not, not too much, because then when you fold this over, your white edge will show at the top. So I want it just inside that, just inside that fold crease. If I don't trim it, it'll get bulky and, and whatever I tuck in the back will catch. So I definitely want to take off those sides but I don't want to take off too much because I want to be able to hide the back. That's why I'm doing it in the first place to hide that white. All right, trimmed and I don't need very much. So I'll save, I'll just tear off a bit, make sure I tear it down low enough and then I'll save this and use it for something else because those are good. It's good, a good balance paper. So I've got a bit of a scrap right here. I just had that piece, so it's why I used it. So you can see that's what's going to show. And I'll do the same thing with my glue. And apparently this was a bill of some sort. Got a lot of those. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter. They're about the same on both sides. Look at the sides, what shows, and I'll glue this down. Now, before I put my glue away, just a tip, I get a baby wipe. I almost always have one baby wipe for the day. At the end of the day, I'll use that leftover baby wipe and I'll wipe the ends of my glue and that way it doesn't, my, my threads and the inside of my cap because, you know, glue stick does that with the, the gluey thing. All right, and now this one is done. Goes in my recycle bin. I have two bins under my desk, one for recycle and then an actual garbage can, just because that way I can still recycle those bits. All right, I might line these up, making sure that the corners goes into the corner without going over the edge. And I'll push that down. Now, if I needed to later, if I didn't put enough glue right here, I could just come in with my art glue or reptile glue, whichever. Or some of you use Barely Arts glue, whatever whatever glue you like. And I've got glue on there now. I manage to get glue on this all the time, which is, you know, we glue, so we're okay. All right, you can see there that it, you can't see the white now. We've got just some words back there and you can't see the white. So there you go. All right, now I'm gonna glue this down on this edge because once again, I made it take too long. The glue here and then I on all right that was really bright of me how about I glue the bottoms because this is going to be a pocket so I'm going to glue the bottom edge of my inside flap and I'm going to glue the side edge of my inside flap and put them down and then I'll do the same thing with my right sided flap and again your order doesn't matter you can do left first right first Either way works just fine. I guess it just depends on which page you're putting them on. You, if you're not doing these in advance, it depends on which page you're putting them on and what orientation works the best. And then I'll take that leftover triangle I had and I'll glue that on as well. I can glue the, I can ink the rest later on because I'll put this in my, my bin, my stash bin, so that when I build a journal, I've got pieces ready to go. All right inked edge and then I'll glue this down on two sides and there is my tuxedo pocket. Now you could, I've got that little itty bitty bit so well, you know what maybe we'll do that too. We'll, we'll see. I'll put this down here and then there's my one, two, three pockets and then again depending on how I put this in do I have it as a side tuck? Do I need more real estate? Honestly because this is card I don't know that I would want to put too many more layers on mine. Um, but you could, and oh no, this one won't work. See this because of the 
because it's not double-sided, I can't put this piece right here. I could have, if this was double-sided, just put that bit right there for another little tuck, maybe for postage stamps or a little die cut or fussy cut image or something. I could have done that. So there you go on this. And that glue on my work surface is going to make me a crazy person, so I'm going to clean that up. Um, I keep hands, hand sanitizer works great to lift up glue. I keep one of those sugar bell bottles. They came in a multi-pack. I keep a sugar bell bottle of hand sanitizer right next to my work surface just because I grab it so many times a day to clean up the extra glue that I made a mess with. It is a quick drying, easy, easy, easy way to clean off your work surface and you know it just takes seconds to pick up and squirt. So there's a tip if if you have glue issues like I have glue issues. And dries and there we go. Okay, done. Tuxedo pocket, finally, file folder. Okay, now this one, how many times have I said this? Now this one really, really will be quick. A file folder, and it's any rectangle or square, I guess it doesn't really matter, cardstock, you fold it over and you punch the top. I decorated this one with just a definition, a Tracy label, and one of those, uh, get them on Amazon, clear flower stickers. And they have birds and um, toadstools and butterflies and all kinds of things. And when you buy a pack, you get like 650,000. So I used that as my decorative bit on there. That is our last one, and it can be done with any rectangular, right? like I said, or square shape. This one's not inked. All it is is folded over and rounded. Here's That one's with a single tab. Here's one with a double tab, front and back, and again with those plain flowers. Here's one that's just on copy paper. It's a thinner one, but those flowers again. And I prefer the single tab, but the double tab is, has a nice place too. And you could even put the tab at the bottom, depending on I love putting a little notepad on there and sticking these in a pocket just because they're super simple, super quick, and um, you know, they're kind of decorative and fun. So here's one. I inked the insides on this one with a stencil, but it's the same idea, just some kind of embellishment. You could use book page. You could use whatever paper you've got, or you could just leave it blank. You don't have to. Like this is just a Tracy paper and with a definition and a sticker and a Tracy label and a bit of tape. And this was the paper as it was. So I didn't put any, put anything else on it. Same with this one. It doesn't need anything. All right. So let's make it. And this is Tracy's new tall kit. Um, I don't remember what it's called. I can't believe I don't remember. Dusty floral. That's it. And then this is grungy wallpaper. No, this is tattered paint, tattered paint, dusty floral. All right. These are, I don't know, about the small, we are memory keepers. We are, and just the letter R, memory keepers. And I know they've changed their name, but you can find them under this. Small envelope punch board, the mini one. I use this probably 95% of the time. I Because there's so many ways to make envelopes without using the punch board, I only infrequently use this for making envelopes. I use it more for making tabs. And there are other things that you can do with this, notches and thumb notches and such. So this is a really good, I believe, investment. I bought mine several years ago at Tuesday morning for five or six dollars. So it, it wasn't super spendy. It was the price of a cup of coffee. I just saw them, I looked this morning on Amazon and I think they're about $14. Now there are some that are like 40 or 50 bucks. Uh, and I don't know why, but I saw them just this morning for about $14 on Amazon. And you can see I've got ink on here and I've, I've had this for, I got this before I started doing paper crafting back when I made cards. So I've had this, I don't even know, a while. And this is a replacement one because I dropped it. Um, but anyway, I've had one of these for a long time and they, they do come in super handy. All right. You use this to make, now there's other ways to do it, but you use this to make the tab on there. So I'm going to decide how wide I want my envelope. So I've got just a uh, off cut of rectangular cardstock. I like that pretty rose. I want it to show. So I'm going to fold it right about here. Now I like it 
where did I put those with a little bit of a reveal here some people make these flush I like it with just I don't know maybe what is that a quarter of an inch an eighth of an inch something like that here you can see there's no reveal so I would have folded it over to match but I like just a little bit of a reveal if I'm doing a single tab so when I trim this off I want to make it deep enough for my tab which is about a quarter of an inch but still not show so I'm going to make this about a half an inch yeah we're going to call it a half an inch deeper longer wider whatever you want to say about like that you don't have to because you can make them even and then trim it up later but because I'm being intentional I'll just do it about like that then I open it up and I'm going to lay it down on my punch board just like this because I like it at the top so I'm going to open it up lay it down I put the top bit just off the center not exactly on the center but just off the center just to the left of the center and punch and that gives me that little bit that corner bit then I use the measuring on the envelope punch board do I want a one inch tab well, that's kind of a small tab I generally go one and a half for smaller cards like this I usually go one and a half in bigger cards I go two but could you have three if you want to write something sure why not um, for this one I'm going to do one and three quarters just to mix it up a little bit that's a little wide for this maybe I'll do one and what is that five eighths yeah one and five eighths all right then you just punch again so it looks like this wherever you want to punch and then you get the little bits out the back then I will use a straight edge and an exacto knife and I will I'm trying to get it so you can see it too I will line this bit this this back corner piece up to make it straight I make sure that this and this are straight so that that way I know I'm trimming off just the amount I want to trim off I make sure those are straight and then I just come in and cut off that extra bit see just cut off that extra bit there I've got a little tiny bit of a lip there but that's what happens when you do things on camera there we go did I get it all can't even see Okay, and then I ink the edges because I like the inked edges and that's what it looks like. I like to round the corners because I just think it gives it a finished look and you can round them bigger, round them small. This is another We Are Memory Keepers tool that I find really handy. It's, it's not for everybody. If you have a regular corner round, a different corner rounder, use it. I only like this one because one, it punches well, two, it's small, and three, it's got three sizes of corners on one punch. So I don't have to dig through to get other ones like there there's the itty bitty corners and it's a great great size for this one now you know what honestly I think I've got too much reveal here it's just a little more than I like well well that's okay I'm gonna move this up just a little bit and I'm gonna roll this back there's no reason on earth that I can't roll it and I'll show you in a minute why it's nicely rolled because look you 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 don't see any any bulk there and especially once I put a little notepad or pocket or a card or whatever in here you're not gonna see it at all and then I'll take my scissors and just gently round this corner just a smidge it doesn't have to be the same rounded just so that it's not sharp and there it is I can this one I probably wouldn't decorate I'd probably put some nouveau deluxe crystal glaze well, I've worn that off on the flower itself and then put a piece of tape right here just to make it look like a flower like here I think I've got a little a little scrap of tape here you know maybe some colored washi or some faux vintage cellophane or what have you and I would call it done it's it's really that that quick and easy all right an hour I made this really quick video into an hour long video well there you go I guess that's how I roll thank you all very much for watching I appreciate your kindness and your support I'll have uh, just a craft with me kind of video coming very soon and then I have another one coming later in the week with Mandy and Justine's um may you be inspired by collaboration that I'm taking part in thank you very much for watching I think I said that I'm I'm dithering now all right 
Have a great day. Happy creating.